My husband of two decades cheated on me. So I went from a heartbroken wife to a ruthless gold digger. I dragged the guilting for almost a decade, ruined his life, and chased him out of town. The first story, a twisted story of love, deceit and vengeance, as a seemingly perfect marriage crumbles beneath the weight of a hidden truth. Next, when a sneaky manager threatens his staff to keep his cheating a secret, his dark plans backfire and gets exposed without mercy. Lastly, a story some will question, some will cringe, but in the end, a scorned lover got her revenge on a cheating ex-boyfriend with a questionable side hustle. Buckle up, vengefully smack the like button into oblivion. And be warned, the following stories are upsetting to cheaters. The following story is told from a female's perspective. At 40, I've been married to my 44-year-old husband for two decades. Together, we have two beautiful children, a 16-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old son. My husband earns quite well by middle-class standards. Our story is a long one filled with secrets and heartache, and I've never shared it with anyone before. We reside in a smallish town in the southern United States, where coming out as gay could have severe repercussions. I believe this is the sole reason my husband hasn't come out to anyone. I discovered he was cheating when he carelessly left a bill for a secret credit card in his coat pocket. As I went through it, I found all the telltale signs of infidelity, payments to a hotel in a nearby county, restaurant bills, gifts, flowers, protection, and even lubricant. Determined to uncover the truth, I began to stake out the hotel on days when he said he'd be late. That's when I saw him bringing different men there. Thanks to my ability to compartmentalize and maintain a poker face, I gave myself time to cool off and devise a plan. First, I got an STD test, which thankfully came back negative. Then, I convinced my husband to use protection, citing side effects from my birth control pill. After much thought, I decided not to confront him or leave him. He provided a comfortable lifestyle that I wouldn't be able to afford on my own. He was a good father, a good partner, except for the cheating, and I had nothing to complain in the bedroom. However, I wasn't going to let him live guilt-free. That would be my revenge. I started small, planning delightful date nights and expressing my desire to reignite the spark in our relationship. Casually, I'd bring up stories of cheating husbands or gay men who used their wives as beards, all while praising the courage of an openly gay couple we knew. On the other hand, I'd laud him as the perfect husband to anyone who would listen, especially if he was within earshot. The guilt gifts began to pour in, and he, even started sending me flowers weekly. For years, I could see the burden weighing on him. As for me, I considered myself in an open marriage, which was easier to accept given my non-monogamous upbringing. Four years ago, my husband met the love of his life and began seeing just one man. As I had started a business by then, I seriously considered ending our marriage. However, when he brought his lover into our home and introduced him to our children, I resolved to continue tormenting him. He hinted at moving to another state, where it would be easier for him to come out but I refused for the sake of my business and our children's well-being. He tried to start arguments, likely hoping I would ask for a divorce, but I defused every attempt. Instead, I'd agree with whatever he said and suggest making it up to him with a nice dinner and great sexy time. This infuriated him, as I knew from spying on his phone that having sexy time with me, felt like cheating on his boyfriend. Eventually, his drinking escalated, and I decided that enough was enough. I gathered evidence of his infidelity over nine years, hired a divorce attorney, and sent the evidence to his employer, our church, and his relatives. The fallout was explosive, he lost his job, the congregation turned against him, his parents refused to take him in, and his lover was driven out of town. Now, almost a year later, I'm a free woman. I retained the house, car, and business, while he was awarded 75% of our retirement and investment accounts, but no alimony. I have full custody of our children and receive child support. He had to move six hours away for a new job, his relationship with his family is strained, his reputation in town is tarnished, and his lover left him for good. My children only tolerate him because I've done my best to shield them, and emphasize that he's still a good father. While neither of us is blameless in this story, the consequences of his cheating ultimately led to years, of guilt, followed by a ruined life. Let's make something clear. I am not the good person in this story. We were both bad. I am not here trying to get pats on the back or to be told that I did well. I know that what I did was messed up. I am here because I wanted to tell someone, and I can't do that in real life. 
The fact that you admitted that you weren't the best person in handling this, makes this story infinitely sweeter. Too many people try to justify that they are a saint, despite doing some heinous things. I truly hope for the best for your kids, and I give you so many props for doing your absolute best to keep them shielded from what happened. Doing the best for your kids is certainly a saintly thing to do. Even when the other things are more devilish. Bravo! In the face of adversity, a closeted, cheating husband, you chose to build financial security and protect your children from the potential hardships of a broken home. Although you initially treated him kindly to guilt him, it could have led him to change or come clean if he were a good husband. You gathered evidence, worked with a divorce attorney, and refrained from badmouthing your ex to your children. You may not have taken the moral high ground, but you put your family's well-being first. Those who criticize might not understand the challenges of poverty, abuse, or financial dependence. Your intelligence, courage, and foresight helped you navigate this tough situation, I see and commend you. I appreciate your story, even if some others don't. Gave me a good chuckle. Surely he knows you knew the whole time though, when you distributed nine years worth of evidence? He figured it out. If you don't mind more intrusion, what did he say when he found out how long you've known? He was shocked. Then it turned into denial. Then he went full nice guy showing his true face and called me every name under the sun. Apparently being a gold digging manipulative bitch is worse than a cheater of 21 years. His lawyer calmed him down, and after that I left everything to the lawyer, and we met to sign the papers, all he could say was, are you happy now? I think people posting negative comments about your actions, fail to understand the concept of this sub. Hell yeah. Go you. I'm very proud of you. You got yourself out in the end and he got what he deserved. I feel like all these negative comments would have been more praise if he cheated with a woman. Regardless, the man got what he deserved, doesn't matter if he sexatimed a tree for nine years. You got used and your relationship a lie. Hope you're doing well. He sexy timed guys for 21 years, since we started dating. If I didn't find out the truth, I would have never started a business, would have moved states with him, and would have been left a single mother in a hard situation. Most people seem to be hung up on the fact I outed him. Well frick him. He cheated on me for 21 years, outing him was not even remotely me getting even. The following story is told from a female's perspective. Gather round, folks. I've got a juicy tale about my friend, Caitlin, who found herself in the middle of some scandalous office shenanigans. It's got all the elements of a classic cheating revenge story, sexy time, lies, and an office affair. Let me break it down for you. Caitlin, my friend and the story's hero. Sandy, the secretary with morals as loose as an untied shoelace. Randy, the IT manager and office sleazebag. Isaac, the big boss man, and owner of a few companies. Olivia, Randy's unsuspecting wife. Caitlin works as a programmer and web designer in a small IT company with about eight other peeps, including her manager and Sandy, the new secretary. Randy, the IT manager, is a grade A creep, who can't help but spew offensive comments about women. Sandy, well, she's what Caitlin calls an upwardly mobile skank who'd do anything, and I mean anything, for a new pair of shoes. She's also been scoring bonuses, but not for her work performance, if you catch my drift. One Saturday afternoon, while everyone else had gone home, Caitlin was busy plugging away at a project when she heard a squeal. Like a sleuth in an office drama, she went to investigate and found her boss's door ajar. As she walked in, she discovered Sandy bent over the desk, with Randy, pants down, standing behind her. Randy's face screamed busted. While Sandy's had a satisfied grin on her face, as though being caught in the act meant nothing to her. Randy, quick to regain his composure, pulled up his pants and threatened Caitlin by saying, Listen up, if you know what's good for you. You saw nothing. Now, this was during the height of that virus that hit the world, and the company was considering staff cuts. So, Caitlin kept quiet about the whole thing. Fast forward six months, and the office affair continued with Sandy raking in those undeserved bonuses. Then, one fateful Saturday, Randy's wife, Olivia, made an unexpected appearance at the office. Randy had slipped away with Sandy earlier, hoping to get some action before his wife showed up. But she was early. Caitlin's heart raced as she saw Olivia standing by Sandy's desk. 
she knew this was the perfect opportunity to get revenge on Randy for all his inappropriate behavior. As soon as Olivia asked to see her cheating husband, Caitlin eagerly offered to help. With a devious brainwave forming in her mind, Caitlin somehow managed to unlock Randy's office door. I don't know how exactly, but either way, she felt a rush of excitement as she politely held the door open for Olivia. As soon as Olivia stepped inside, she was hit with the sight of Randy and Sandy tangled up together in a compromising position, let's call it the horizontal tango. Olivia unleashed a storm of fury on Randy, who fumbled for excuses while pulling up his pants. Sandy tried to sneak away, but Olivia's wrath followed her like a heat-seeking missile. In a desperate attempt to deflect, Sandy asked Randy. Why didn't you tell me, you were married? Spoiler, he had. Randy's glare could have melted steel, but Caitlin shrugged it off, reminding him she'd kept her lips zipped, just like he'd asked. Curious about Caitlin's cryptic comment, Olivia demanded answers. Caitlin spilled the beans, laying out the awful details. While Olivia continued her rampage, Isaac, the big boss, strolled in. He'd heard the commotion and came to investigate. Caitlin was asked to leave, and the rest is history. Randy? Fired and awaiting a court date, something about fraud or embezzlement. Sandy? Booted for gross misconduct. As for Randy's marriage, who knows? But Caitlin? She's still at the company, now working as an assistant manager under a brand new female boss. And that, my friends, is what we call poetic justice. The following story is told from a female's perspective. You'll see just how much this cheater deserved it, and how my taste in men is downright awful. This story will trigger some things in you or even make you cringe, but as I said, my taste in men is awful and I made some bad choices too. So, get cozy with your popcorn, because this is going to be quite the story. I want you to feel the fiery rage I'm experiencing as I type this. Let's dive into some background details. Max and I practically grew up side by side. We became friends when I was 9 and he was 12. Our parents got along splendidly, and our friendship blossomed. He was like the older brother I never knew I needed. However, everything shifted when the pandemic struck in 2020. Midway through quarantine, just after New Year's in 2021, our conversations took on a different tone, and we found ourselves in a situationship. But it was short-lived. Discovering he was texting another girl, I promptly kicked him to the curb, as both a friend and a romantic interest. In April 2021, I began dating a new guy, whom we'll call Nick. I truly believed I was in love with Nick, but trouble brewed when Max found out. I'm not joking when I say Max harassed us relentlessly. He even stalked both Nick and me for a solid three days and two nights. Nick and I had Max blocked on every platform imaginable. Phone numbers, social media, WhatsApp, Telegram, you name it, he was blocked. But this guy went to great lengths, buying a bunch of new SIM cards just to call and torment us at different times. He even created multiple Instagram accounts with nonsense names, all to keep messaging us, insisting that Nick didn't deserve me and that he was just trying to protect me. I genuinely thought he was just jealous. And I know Instagram limits account creation based on IP addresses, but this madman had ExpressVPN. I've lost count of how many accounts I've blocked. But he didn't stop there. He infiltrated our Discord server, which I used at the time to study for upcoming exams. With my university friends, Nick and I were in the same course, and hurled insults at us. We'd ban him, but he'd just make new accounts. He even sent emails from various addresses, writing lengthy rants about how I was a fool for not choosing him, and how much he despised Nick. I was losing sleep over his antics, going two nights without rest. The stress started affecting my daily life, so at the end of the third day, I called him. And he had the nerve to ask me to apologize. Excuse me? I wasn't the one messaging other women, was I? I told him off, saying he didn't treat me right and that I knew my self-worth. I also made it clear I wouldn't tolerate his childish behavior any longer, and threatened to report him to the police for cyberbullying. Finally, he apologized. We managed to settle things, but he would still text me occasionally, just like old times. He started dating the girl he'd been texting behind my back, and honestly, I didn't care enough to intervene. Sometimes, we'd chat when we couldn't sleep, discussing our relationship problems. He was always there for me, a shoulder to cry on or someone to ensure my safety, when I needed to clear my mind. If I wanted to disappear for a few days, he'd offer me a room in his house with a key to lock the door. Whenever Nick upset me, Max would come to my rescue. He was my rock. He even smacked Nick once when Nick had hurt me. I thought I loved Nick, 
but he turned out to be an abusive jerk. I broke up with Nick after that fight, ending a relationship that had lasted just three months. And yes, all this chaos happened in three short months. August 2021. That was the year when everything in my life spiraled downhill. Max and I had unintentionally rekindled our bond, stronger than ever, as he was always there for me when I needed someone. One day, we decided to hang out and smoke again, and something I never thought would happen occurred, we were both sober and consenting, of course. From that, moment, I found myself in his hands, vulnerable to him like never before. I had never felt vulnerable with anyone, but with Max, it felt safe. During our relationship, he would ask me for spicy photos, if you know what I mean, and I would send them. I know. This detail becomes important later on. Six months into the relationship, I caught him on Tinder. We argued for nearly three hours, and as I gathered my things to leave his house. But then it happened. I can't mention it here directly, but I can say he hurt me, really bad. If you get what I mean. It was one of the most traumatic moments I've ever experienced, but I feel relieved now that he got what he deserved. You may wonder why I didn't report him, and the truth is, his family is quite influential, and our current justice system doesn't always believe victims. Plus, I had already washed my clothes when I got home, so I wouldn't have had any evidence even if I did report him. He got into a new relationship soon after we broke up. Fast forward to end of September, 2022. He sends me a Snapchat message. Where are they? I thought he meant my photos, and I was right. I told him I deleted them from the chat, because we were no longer together, and it was weird for him to ask about them since he has a girlfriend. But then this guy, yet again, proves he has no manners whatsoever and asks me for new photos. The audacity. He cheats on me, hurt me, and then asks me for selfies while he's in a relationship? I get that you lack self-respect, but at least respect your girl and have some shame. I keep saying no, but he starts begging. Come on now, don't be like that. Just, send new ones. I take screenshots and block him. Two days later, one of his close friends calls me and tells me. Hate to say it, but Max had shown us your pictures from before. I just think you deserve to know that. At first, I didn't believe him, but then he accurately described them, and I knew he was telling the truth. He also revealed that Max had been discussing our sexy time life with him and their other friends. I don't mean to be like this, but why do some boys, not men, think sexy time is such an accomplishment? What's there to be proud of? Why brag to your friends about it? Is it because it's a rare occurrence in your life, that you have to go around talking about it? It's just plain embarrassing. After I found out, I can't even begin to describe the rage that coursed through my veins. I sent his girlfriend the screenshots of him begging me for selfies and explained everything to her. He then texted me. Please, please tell my girlfriend it's not what it looks like. Tell her that the screenshots are fake. Listen, I'm literally begging you. I told him to get lost, but somehow, this reject of a human being, this disappointment of a boy manipulated his girlfriend into believing that I was still in love with him, and that the screenshots were fake. This innocent girl believed him instead of seeing what was right in front of her eyes, and started hating me. My intention wasn't even to help her escape, I only wanted to hurt Max, by causing his girlfriend to dump him since he had betrayed my trust, and I needed to get back at him. All this happened in October 2022. And then, just a month ago, he called me on my birthday. I had a few too many glasses of vodka and wasn't even aware that I had fallen asleep, until the headache from opening my eyes hit me, as I picked up my phone at 4 a.m. It was a no-caller ID number. Okay, what's going on? I didn't think it was the police or the hospital calling me at this hour, since I'm just a regular university student. I answered the call. I, miss you. He said. Well, I don't miss him. I don't want to hear his voice, let alone see his face, ever again. I asked him what he wanted from me at 4 a.m. He said. Happy birthday? And I told him to never call me again and hung up. Not five seconds later, he called me again and admitted. Well, now I got you on the phone anyway, I need to admit that I cheated on you before. Not just through texts, don't be silly. I had sexy time, with other people. I asked him if he hurt them too, referring to the incident I can't name here. Because clearly, his looks weren't the only reason women were drawn to him, it was his dad's money. He then dropped the bomb. Good one. Ask your best friend Tessie what we did. We had more than a great time together. Behind your back. I told him that enough was enough. 
that I wasn't going to take it anymore. He mocked me by saying, What could you possibly do? He underestimated me, which turned out to be a huge mistake. So hold on tight, folks, because this is going to be a wild ride. Turn up the music and grab some more popcorn. Do you remember the girl that Max dated right before we got together? Well, she reached out to me, and we became really good friends. We would often talk about Max, and she mentioned something that really stood out to me. She asked. Was he always this disrespectful? I asked her what she meant, and instead of seeing the typing animation, I received videos of Max using racist slurs, making hurtful comments about the LGBTQ plus and disabled communities, and saying a ton more racist stuff. It was unbelievable. So I did what any vengeful person would do. I emailed these screenshots to his university, and he got expelled shortly after. He couldn't attend any other university in the country, either. But that's not all. As I mentioned, Max's family is quite powerful. His dad owns a big lump of shares of an oil company in the United Arab Emirates, and they're wealthy. They're also a respected Muslim family and are extremely religious. For those of you who don't know, drinking alcohol and having sexy time before marriage, are strictly prohibited in Islam. And yet, Max is a forbidden skittle addict. For those who don't know, narcotics he uses are a class A in the UK, and possession, sale, or consumption can result in a prison sentence of 7 to 14 years, depending on the amount involved. To make matters worse, Max has also developed a serious drinking problem since we broke up. Remember the friend who told me about Max leaking and showing my questionable selfies to people? Well, they've been keeping me updated on everything. I even know where Max keeps his golden goose at his house. He tries to hide it because his parents often pay him surprise visits, and he doesn't want to get caught. His mom has known me since I was a child. So, I decided to give her a friendly call. I chatted with her for a few minutes before bringing up Max's issues. I told her that he's been struggling with severe drinking problems ever since we broke up. I acted as though I didn't know about his skittle addiction, but his mom was going to see his stash regardless. It was like killing two birds with one stone. When this kind and beautiful lady, who is very loyal to her beliefs, found out that her son, whom they had raised to be a good Muslim boy, was, drinking, she and her husband didn't waste any time getting to Max's house. They found everything. To make matters worse, Max's house was under his dad's name, and Max had never worked a day in his life. He was completely dependent on his parents at 26 years old. Even the money he used to lure those poor girls in, belonged to his dad. The aftermath of this was his parents removing Max's name from their will, disowning him, kicking him out of the house, and cutting him off financially. Max's girlfriend wasn't with him for his stunning good looks either. What can I say? Justice was served. Let me tell you, gossip is a sneaky little thing. When Max's girlfriend found out that he was broke, she ran for the hills so fast, that even the radars couldn't keep up. She even reached out to me and apologized for not realizing who Max truly was. I just let her think that she had some kind of epiphany. It's all good though, because I wasn't done yet. Turns out, Max had a little side hustle going on. And by side hustle I mean something very illegal. He was committing fraud for his online spending. So, I did what any self-respecting person would do, and reported him to the authorities. Within a week, the authorities searched his house because he hadn't moved out yet. And guess what they found? His stash. They found all kinds of narcotics, that I won't go into specifically and enough alcohol to fill a sewer. He had a whole cabinet full of this stuff. It's a good thing they took his devices, too, because I thought he was just buying things like skins for video games or Discord Nitro. But, nope. They found out he was doing some pretty sketchy stuff online. He actually had videos of the worst kind you can imagine, which I can't name here. They say that living well is the best revenge, but this is definitely better. But please, OP, now go out and live your best life from now on. You deserve so much better. Thank you so much. I'm just relieved that he's got what he deserved, and I'm currently living my best life. Thought this was turning into an ExpressVPN promo. No way. Please visit him in jail, solely to tell him he shouldn't have hurt you. Will do. You stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate you. Subscribe, so you don't miss out on future episodes and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. 
I'll be seeing you in the next one.